Finally, beyond our shores, there remains no shortage of forces who wish to harm America and our interests. Senators will vote today on a measure to impose sanctions on Nord Stream 2. We can send a strong warning to Putin that he won't be allowed to use energy as a weapon. We can signal strong support for Eastern and Central European partners who've long opposed Putin's pipeline. Even Democratic senators who now oppose the sanctions they used to support acknowledge the pipeline is, quote, a tool of malign influence of the Russian Federation. Really, the government of Germany should have shelved this project itself a long time ago. Berlin can still make the right call. These sanctions, like the prior Nord Stream 2 sanctions that had overwhelming bipartisan support here in Congress, are not about driving a wedge in Europe. The pipeline itself is the wedge. That's the whole point. That's been Putin's goal, decoupling Ukraine from Europe and making Europe even more reliant on Russian gas. So for senators who seem more concerned about standing with Berlin than with Kiev, this bill includes a waiver. We expect President Biden would actually exercise the waiver. But a clear bipartisan message would still be sent just like when 98 senators vote to enact CAFTA in 2017, just like when Democrats signed off on the previous bill to sanction Nord Stream 2 in the 2020 NDAA. So I hope each of our colleagues will support Senator Cruz's measure. The Senate must show we are focused on real life threats to democracy, to security, and to our friends. As we speak, Russia is literally preparing to escalate its military assault on Ukraine. It has amassed more than 100,000 troops on Ukraine's border. Deterring Russian aggression and preparing for the very real threat of a major war on the European continent will take far more than these sanctions. It will take urgency and seriousness from the administration. Time is of the essence. Our delays in getting emergency assistance to Ukraine approved do not inspire much confidence. The administration cannot move at the speed of bureaucracy. That won't cut it. Humanitarian and military support to Ukraine cannot wait. Reinforcing American and NATO positions in Europe cannot wait. We must not pull our punches out of some fear of provoking, of provoking Putin. What will encourage Putin is if he senses American weakness. Ukraine and our eastern flank NATO allies deserve our support. They're on the front lines of a much broader war than Russia and China are conducting against the democratic internal order itself. This order helps America. It benefits our national interests and it benefits our allies. <clears throat> but it's not going to enforce itself. It will not defend itself. And our allies will not act if America fails to lead. Our nation's contest with China and Russia is the biggest challenge we face. It will entail significant risk and perhaps, God forbid, serious sacrifice. Meeting these challenges and preventing the worst will take the kind of unity and bipartisanship that President Biden promised. Not the outrageous, outrageous and divisive partisanship he has embraced. 